In this video we're going to look at changing probabilities to odds. So we'll do examples 9, 10, uh, 11, 12, 13. So we'll quickly go over what probability means, what odds in favor are and what odds against are. Okay, so we all, we've all we already covered probability. Probability is the number, this hash sign means number, number of favorable, write it down please, probability equals number of favorable or successful outcomes, whichever you prefer. Number of favorable outcomes or successful outcomes over the total. Make sense? Right, so uh, probability of rolling this of three is one in six, okay? If you roll a dice, the probability that you'll roll the three is one out of six. One favorable out of six total possibilities. Six possibilities, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, number of favorable outcomes over total number of outcomes. Now, odds in favor is number of favorable outcomes over number of unfavorable outcomes. And it's usually written as a ratio, so it's, it's not usually written as a fraction, it's usually written as a ratio with two or the uh, colon. So, I'll, I'll do it with the two, so it's, it's number of favorable outcomes to number of unfavorable outcomes. So write that down. Number of favorable, out favorable outcomes to number of unfavorable outcomes. So what are the odds in favor, odds in favor of rolling a three? There's one favorable outcome, that's rolling the three to how many unfavorable outcomes? You can roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? So if you take out that one favorable outcome of rolling a three, you've got one, two, three, four, five unfavorable outcomes. Now the five represents rolling a one, a two, a four, a five, or a six. Does that make sense? So this is one favorable outcome to five unfavorable outcomes. So one to five. And by the way, that can also be written as a fraction. It can, uh, it can also, well, first of all, it, it's often written like this, one with a colon, then a five, one to five. It can also be written as a fraction, one over five, which is kind of weird because we already write the probability as a fraction, right? So just to distinguish, we usually don't write it as a fraction, but it can be. Uh, odds against are simply the reverse of this. It's the number of unfavorable to the number of favorable. So number of unfavorable outcomes, write it down please, to the number of favorable outcomes. So when you write it, you learn it, right? Whatever you write in paper, it's kind of like writing it into your brain. The more writing you do, the more you remember, the more you learn. So what are the odds against rolling a three? Odds against. Odds against is simply number of unfavorable to number of favorable outcomes. If I roll a dice and I'm trying to get a three, I'm trying to get a three, there are five unfavorable outcomes. Get it a one, a two, a four, a five, or a six. Five of them. There's one favorable outcome, rolling a three, one. The odds against rolling a three are five to one, and it can also be written with a colon, five to one, okay? So that's the basic course, it can be written as a fraction too, but we don't, we rarely see that. Okay, so that's the basics. You gotta get your number of favorable, get your number of unfavorable, then figure out if it's in favor or against, and which way it goes, right? So we'll take a pack of cards, standard pack of cards, in example 10 now, we'll draw a card at random from the deck, What's the probability of getting a king? Got a queen, no good. The probability of getting a king, any idea? There are four kings in the pack, and there are 52 cards, okay? So there's four kings. So the probability is the number of favorable out of the total, right? Now the number of favorable outcomes, there are four, because there are four kings, there's the king is 
spades. There's the king of hearts, the king of diamonds, and the king of uh, clubs. Uh, there's the clubs. Clubs, hearts, diamonds, and spades, right? So there's four favorable outcomes over 52. Now, whenever we're doing math, we always put the fraction in lowest terms, right? So put that fraction in lowest terms. 4 into 4 goes once. 4 into 5 goes one time. Remainder 1. Now I have 4 into 12. 4 into 12 goes three times. So we have 1 over 13. So the probability of getting a king is 1 over 13. One favorable out of 13 uh, total, so to speak. So, so we've broken it down to saying, well, if you just have 13 cards, then there's, you know, 13 total uh, outcomes and one favorable. So what are the odds in favor of getting a king? Now, to get odds in favor, we do number of favorable, two, number of unfavorable. And again, we could, we, uh, and we have, um, the probability is one over 13. So, um, we could say, okay, if you take 13 attempts, you're going to get one king, right? So you're going to get 12 attempts where there is no king, and one attempt where there is. Number of favorable be one. one. If you take 13 attempts on average, you'll get one favorable to 12 unfavorable, right? Does that make sense? So the odds of getting a king are 1 to 12. What are the odds against getting a king? Odds against are the reverse. It's simply number of unfavorable to number of favorable. So if you have 13 cards, on average, one of them is going to be a king. If you have 13 cards, um, there will be one king and the other 12 will be unfavorable. There'll be everything else, ace to queen, and uh, right. So, so that's that. Now, can you do this one? What's the probability of getting a spade? And remember that there are thirteen spades in a deck, right? So, what's the probability of getting a spade? There's thirteen spades in a deck. Deck of fifty-two. So that's probability the again is number of favorable out of the total. So number of favorable is 13. There's 13 spades, right? So there's, there are a lot of spades. Here's a spade, here's a spade, here's a spade. There's lots of spades in the, in the deck, right? And there's 52 cards total. Now, how you have to simplify fractions in math, right? Always. Always put them in lowest terms. So 13 over 52 equals 13 to 13 goes once, 13 to 52 goes four times. We have 1 over 4. Which means, on average, if you had four cards, on average, uh, uh, theoretically, if you have four cards, one of them is going to be a spade. Right? So, you randomly draw a card, randomly select a card, um, three times out of four, it's not going to be a spade, it's going to be a, a diamond uh, queen or, or um, club and one time out of four it's going to be a spade. So the odds in favor are what? Do that yourself. You got it? It's one favorable outcome to three unfavorable. Here's the one favorable, here's the three unfavorable, right? And what's the odds against getting a spade? Can you do that one? Do that one yourself. Odds against are number of unfavorable outcomes. That's three unfavorable. For every four cards, there's going to be one spade. So there'll be three um, unfavorable outcomes to one favorable outcome, right? So let's look at example 11. Suppose the weatherman says there are 40 there's a 40% chance of rain 
What are the odds in favor of getting rain? What are the odds against getting rain? Okay. First of all, 40% chance means 40% probability. But we always have to, to get the odds, we're going to put that in a fraction in lowest terms. So we've got to remember that. First step is we're going to, for all these examples, change to a fraction in lowest terms. So we start with a probability that is a fraction in lowest terms. Can you do that? Change 40% to a fraction lowest terms. Press pause and do it if you need more time. So the probability or the chance of rain is 40%, that's 40 over 100, which is of course 4 over 10, which is of course 2 to 2 goes twice, 2 to, two to 4 goes twice, 2 to 10 goes 5 times, 2 over 5, right? probability of 2 over 5. So what are the odds in favor? Odds in favor is number of favorable to number of unfavorable. Number of successful to number of unsuccessful. Number of times it's going to happen, number of times it's not going to happen basically, right? So probability 2 out of 5 means out of 5 of the 5 days like this, 2 of them are going to rain, basically, right? Your chances of rain are 2 out of 5, right? So if you take 5, if you manage, imagine, imagine there was 5 days like this, on 2 of those days to be rain out of 5, right? So your odds in favor would be 2 to unfavorable 3. Okay? Now, do this one. What's the odds against getting rain? Or the odds of not getting rain? So, odds against is reversing it. It's number of unfavorable, right? To number of favorable. See, 2 over 5 is the favorable over the total, right? So the 5, so this is favorable over total. So 5 is the total, right? And that includes 2 favorable outcomes and 3 unfavorable, right? So it's actually 2 over um, 2 plus 3, if you think about it. It's 2 favorables over 2 favorables plus 3 unfavorables, right? Two successes over two successes plus three unsuccesses. Anyway, so this would be three, two, two would be the odds against getting rain. <coughs> Press pause and do this one yourself. Suppose there's a 65% chance of an event happening. What are the odds in favor of it? What are the odds against? First step is turn the percentage into the, the percentage probability or chance. That probability, okay. Turn that into a fraction in lowest terms. Okay, have you, have you got it? So 65% is 65 over 100. And simplify that. Okay, I hope you press pause and try this example. I'm going to finish it off now. So 5 into 6 goes 1 time, remainder 1. 5 into 15 goes 3 times. 5 into 10 goes twice. 5 into 0 goes 0 times. We have the probability is 13 over 20. Now that is the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes, right? Or it's in fact 13 over 13 favorables plus 7 unfavorables, right? So for this event, if you were to run 20, on average, if you're, if, 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 uh, out of 20 times the event, um, would happen 13, okay? So out of 20 attempts, you would have 13 successes or 13 favorable outcomes and seven um, seven um, failures right or unfavorable outcomes so um, the odds in favor are number of successes we could say for fun 
to number of failures. That's another way of looking at it, right? Success is the failures. So for, for a probability of 13 out of 20, you would have 13 successes, 7 failures, right? So it would be 13 to 7. What's the odds against? And just for fun, you can think about odds against as number of failures to number of successes. So failures. There's 7 failures to, 20 success, to, to, to uh, 13 successes, right? So press pause and do this one. You have managed a strike in 60 out of 400 of your bowls when you're going bowling. What is the empirical probability you will get a strike on your next bowl? Press pause and calculate that. Then do what are the odds in favor of getting a strike on your next bowl? What are the odds against you getting a strike on your next bowl? Press pause and do those. Okay, I hope you've pressed pause and tried them. I'm going to do them now. So the probability of getting a strike or a success is empirically 60 out of 400, right? Which is, divide top and bottom by 10, 6 out of 40. Did you get that? And then divide top and bottom by 2. 2 and 6 goes 3 times, 2 and 4 goes twice, 2 and 0 goes 0 times. We have 3 out of 20, okay? In other words, if you, on average, if you took 20 shots, you would have three strikes, and how many misses? How many non-strikes? You'd have three strikes plus 17 shots that were not strikes, okay? So what are the odds in favor of getting a strike, and what are the odds against getting a strike? Write that down. Have you got it? So, where we're saying that out of a total of 20 shots, on average, you would get three strikes, right? That's the probability, three out of 20. That's your success rate. So, that makes what? That means the odds are, if you look at the number of successes, to number of failures, that would be for every tw 20 shots, 3 successes to 17 failures, right? And what are the odds against? The odds against are you're looking at number of failures to number of successes, right? So that would be 17 failures to 3 successes out of every 20 shots on average. Now just so you know, we could have said the probability is just 60 out of 400. So if you do this, what's 400 minus 60? 340, right? So we could say that um, for every, for, so out of a total number of 400 shots, okay, we would get uh, 60 strikes and 340 uh, not strikes, non-strikes, basically, right? So you could say your number of successes are 60 to failures 340. This is correct, but it's not simplified. See, so if you simplify that, you've got to, you know, write as a fraction 60 to 340, and divide by 10 to the top and bottom, you get 6 over 34, divide by 2 in the top and bottom, and you get 3 over 17, or 3 uh, to 17, okay? So, just so you know, you can do it that way if you want to. You can write it down as a ratio, uh, or a, a, as an odd, and, and then simplify it, but, but it's probably best to kind of simplify the fraction at the very beginning, and then write your odds, right?